What's up YouTube, Seth here on Super Seth TV, and this is my full review of the Takey One, the world's first 3D holographic smartphone, which won the CES Innovation Award for 2015. So I got this a couple of weeks ago, and you may have already seen the unboxing, and now that I've had it for some more time, I can bring you my final thoughts. The way I'll be doing this review is that initially I'll go through this as a smartphone on its own, and then we'll talk about its unique feature, the 3D. So kicking things off with the design and build, it kind of reminds me of a cross between a OnePlus One and a Nokia Lumia device. Now this isn't a bad thing, you've got a metal frame with a soft touch removable back and it does come with two back covers, one in black and one in white, both of which are included in the box. Overall it has a nice build and it feels premium, but I do think the buttons let it down. They feel a little loose and it would have been nice if they were more solid. In terms of the specs and performance, you have an octa-core 2GHz processor with 2GB of RAM and 32GB of onboard storage. You also have an SD card slot which will let you expand the memory by up to 64GB. Definitely useful if you will be downloading a lot of 3D movies. Looking at benchmarks, you can see that we're getting results in the range of some of last year's flagships. Generally speaking, it will be fine for day-to-day -day tasks, but not as smooth as I'm used to, and that does also come down to the operating system. Although you do have Android, it is version 4.2.2 Jelly Bean with the Takey skin on top. Yes, you heard right, Jelly Bean. Obviously, this is a big setback for the device, and although it will depend on your own usage on how much this will affect you overall, it is something you have to bear in mind and may prove limiting. For example, some apps may not be compatible. I tried to install Google Plus and I got this message. I have asked Takey when you can expect an update to Lollipop and they have said they're aiming for late October, but I've got nothing solid. This device also comes with dual SIM card slots, which is great, especially if you're somebody who travels a lot and needs to use native SIM cards. But these only support up to 3G. There is no 4G LTE support. Another setback and maybe a deal breaker for some altogether. Moving on to the battery, you have a 2500 milliamp removable battery. Usage will vary from person to person and I couldn't actually see any on screen time on the Takey skin. So I can't give you any comprehensive times. But the battery life was okay overall I found. One thing you do have to bear in mind is that this is a 3D device and you are much more likely to be viewing lots more content, lots more 3D content probably more than your usual smartphone, which will mean you will most likely need a top up during the day. And this is why the additional battery provided with the device will come in handy, as you can always carry around a spare. In terms of the cameras, you have a 13 megapixel rear facing camera with an f2.0 aperture, and it's using the Sony IMX135 sensor with a five megapixel ultra wide angle front facing selfie camera. Quality from the rear facing camera wasn't bad and you can get some nice shots in good light, but I did find the autofocus and overall software was pretty slow. I don't think this is using any phase detection autofocus like many of the newer flagships we're used to. Also the images you take will be in 2D and I believe the next Takey version will have dual cameras to be able to take 3D images natively. The front facing camera isn't great to be honest, it tends to overexpose and images are very soft. In terms of the display you have a large 5.5 inch display with 1080p resolution which is sharp with nice vibrant colours and good viewing angles. But let's talk about what makes this device special and the reason you would actually consider buying this and that is the 3D technology. As mentioned, this did receive the CES Innovation Award of 2015 and it's easy to see why this is. It's definitely the best 3D I've seen without glasses on a device and it works really well overall. I have shown it to a few family and friends without telling them that this is a 3D device and they have been pretty impressed with the 3D effect. So the way this works and what makes it different from previous 3D devices you may have come across is that it has sensors which track your eyes and present a separate image to each eye giving you that 3D effect. Now once again I would like to emphasize that this is not like the Amazon Fire Phone which tracks your head to give you what they call dynamic perspective. What you have on the Takey One is actual 3D. It's not going to project Princess Leia as a hologram or anything so do keep your expectations realistic and obviously I think it goes without saying but just to clarify that the 3D is only visible to the person with the device because it is tracking your eyes. Just wanted to clarify that for any of the idiots that are watching this video and are going to start complaining in the comments that they cannot see the 3D through this 2D video. Native 3D content work well and it comes with some demo videos and short movie clips. These were however in Chinese and you also have an app called Hollow Space in which you can download a selection of 3D games although the library isn't too extensive. I generally didn't get any eye strain or headaches. Occasionally if the 3D effect was too extreme it was a little bit straining on the eyes but overall pretty smooth. 
You can also add 2D video files and it will convert them into 3D on the fly using the inbuilt app. But as expected, this will never be as good as native 3D content and personally, I wasn't too keen on this myself. You also have a gesture sensor which will let you wave your finger around to interact with games and things. Seems like they've included this to try to make the 3D experience a little bit more interactive, but it's not great. The sensor is towards the bottom of the phone so you sort of have to keep your finger there for it to work properly. And personally, I'm not a fan of this and I switched it off as I have done with previous Samsung devices which had similar sort of sensors. So there we have it, the Takey One. Realistically speaking, as a smartphone itself, it is pretty average but that's not really what you'd be primarily buying this device for anyway. It is all about the 3D and that is something that it does really, really well. Who is this device for? Well, obviously it has a niche market, mainly targeted at 3D enthusiasts. And if you are one, then this might be something you want to check out. Links to the latest pricing and availability will be in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then please do hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out. I'm always trying to mix things up and bring you guys different devices and content. So I really hope you do like it. Do also drop me a comment below and let me know what you think of the Takey One. If you haven't already, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. I've got plenty more content coming up on here. Thanks for watching. This is Safa on Super Saf TV, and I'll see you next time.